Good morning and a welcome to St. Samaritan Baptist Church. You could have chose anywhere else to log in and to tune in to, but we thank you so much for tuning into SSBC. Take your shoes off, get in the kitchen, get the family together. You're about to experience a great worship service. Come on, lift your hands up and begin to worship him. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. How many really love the Lord on this morning? Amen. Come on, if you really love the Lord, come on, open up your mouth and say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love come on, you. tell him again, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love come on, Lord, you mean everything yes, to me. Yes. Lord, I thank you for waking me up this morning. Yes. Lord, I thank you for closing me in my right mind. Lord, I thank you for giving me the activities of my limbs. Lord, I thank you for keeping the hand of the enemy away from me. Lord, I thank you. Because I know that the devil tries to come to sift me as we. But Lord, you said that you're going to lift up a standard against the enemy. And I thank you for what you're going to do on this morning, Father. Little simple song that says, Lord, I love you. Yes, I love you. How I love you. Glory to God. I really love you. Come on, let's lift it up together. Lord, I love you. Come on and tell him, yes, I love you, Jesus. Yes, I love you. How I love you. How I love you. Come on and tell him, I really love you. I really love you. Come on, tell him again, Lord, I love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. Come on, you can't tell him enough. Yes, I love you, Jesus. Yes, I love you. Come on, how I love you. How I love you. Come on, I really, really, really love you, Jesus. I really love you. Come on and tell him, just for who you are, glory to God. Just for who you are. Come on, in all of your glory. In all of your glory. Come on, my. Sing holy, 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 Jesus. Holy, holy. Come on and tell him, come on. You are everything, yes, you are. You are everything. Come on, I ever needed you to be. I need you to be. Come on, you are the great. You are the great. Come on and tell him, I am, yes, you are, Jesus. I am. Tell him in all of your glory, Jesus. In all of your glory. Come on, my heart sings holy, holy. My heart sings. Come on, holy Jesus. Holy, holy. Come on and tell him you are everything. Yes, you are, Jesus. You are everything. And I ever needed you to be, Jesus. I need you to be. Come on, tell him again. You are everything. Yes, you are. That I ever needed you to be king. Come on, right where you are, to, you ought to lift up your hand and say, You are everything. That I ever needed you to be king. Come on, you've been a mother, you've been a father, you've been a sister, you've been a brother. Whatever I needed you to be. That I ever needed you to be. Come on, right there, lift your hand up. You are the great. You are the great. Come on, open up your mouth and tell her, you are the great. You are the great. Come on, tell him, you are the great. Come on, tell him, he's the great. You are the great. You are the great. Come on, last time, you are the great. You are the great. Come on and tell him, I am, yes you are. I am. Come on, lift your hands up right there. Come on and begin to worship him. 
Come on, hallelujah. Come on, you're everything that I ever need you to be. Come on, we love you on this morning, Father. We thank you, Father, for keeping us in our right mind. We thank you for shilling us on this morning. We thank you for keeping us. We bless you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you once again. Thank you for this day. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for all your many blessings. We know that you are always with us and that you would never leave us or forsake us. We ask you to continue to watch over us through these trials and tribulations. We ask you to continue to bless the children, bless the elderly, bless the sick and shut in, bless those who don't know you. We ask you to touch the heart of our leaders. Help them make the right decision. Continue to just watch over them. Thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you want to do. This is in our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Here we go. Come on, congregation, a song. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. All the angels, angels by his heaven and earth adore him. We're singing, what a mighty God we serve. Oh, what a mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God! What a mighty God! We serve all the angels, angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. We're singing, what? what a mighty God! We serve. Come on, what a holy God we serve! What a holy God we serve! What a holy what a God! Holy God we serve all the angels, angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God! What a what a mighty God we serve! What a mighty God! What a mighty God we serve! All the angels, angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve! Come on, right there, put your hands together. You know we serve a mighty God. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah! We serve the awesome Savior. We serve the risen Savior. Hallelujah! Come on, let's sing it one more time. Oh, what a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, the Well, my brother and my sister, we've reached that portion of service where each and every one of us can participate and be a blessing. Listen, I know there's so much going on in this season of uncertainty, but I must encourage you, ma'am, I must encourage you, sir, to be faithful in your giving this morning. Listen, I know there's a lot going on. Stimulus checks are in the mail. Stimulus checks are being deposited. Uh, I want to encourage you to remember that our giving begins at the 10th. I want to encourage you to take a moment to tithe this morning at any of the means listed here on your screen. You can simply give this morning by searching for St. Smyrna in the GiveLify store on the GiveLify app, excuse me, there on your iPhone or your Android. You can search for us on PayPal at www.paypal.me slash St. Smyrna BC. Uh, also, you can cash app the church right there 
at the handle on your screen uh, available there. Please join us. You can mail that moment in. You can drop it off in person. Uh, but please, brother, please, sister, let us all be faithful to our giving in God this morning. Good morning, St. Bernard. Come on, put your hands together right where you are. How many know that we're blessed in the city? We're blessed in the field. Amen. God has given us the power over the enemy. That's why we can call ourselves blessed people on this morning. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, let me hear you. Let me hear you say, bless, bless, bless. Let me hear you say, bless, bless, bless. Come on and say, I bless your bless. Everybody's blessed. Come on. We'll bless as we are. We'll bless as we are. We'll bless as we are. We'll bless when we come. When we go, we cast down every Come on. Sickness and power for the devil in the field. We are blessed. Let me hear you say, bless, bless, bless. Come on and say, bless, bless, bless. Come on and say, I bless your bless. Everybody's blessed. Come on, we'll bless as we are. We'll bless. Come on, put sing it together. We'll bless as we are. And when we go, we cast down that fear. Sickness and come on. So the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We are blessed. Come on, and say, come on. Say, late in the midnight hour, God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work in your favor. Yes, it is. Come on, let me hear you say, late. What you're going through. Come on, say late. Late in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your face. Come on, I don't care what the enemy say. You tell the devil, say late. Late in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your face. Let me hear you come on. Let me hear you say, bless. 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 Come on and say, bless. Say, I bless your bless. Everybody's blessed. Everybody's blessed. Come on. We're blessed as we are. We're blessed. Come on, tell the devil. Yes, we are. We're blessed. Come on, I say lay in the midnight hour. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. Come on, sing it one more time. Let me hear you say lay in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn it around. It's gonna work. It's gonna work in your favor. How many believe it? No matter what the enemy is saying, say lay. Lay in the midnight hour. God's gonna turn it around. Come on, and around, and around, and around, your finances, and around, your healing, and around, 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 and around. Oh, come on, I say it is going to work. 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 I say this gonna work. I say this gonna work. I say this gonna work. I let it know that all things shall work together for your good. I say this gonna work. I say this.
is going to work. No matter what the devil says, I said it's going to work. I said it's going to work. I said it's going to work. Here we go. Come on. I said it's going to work. Come on, put your hands together if you know it's all going to work for your good. I said it's gonna work. Get up and try it again. I said it's gonna work. Stick your head up, hey. Stick your chest out. I tell you, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I said it's gonna work. 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 I can do all things. Jesus, who's tripping? I said, it's going to work. I said, it's going to work. I said, it's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. Come on, clap your hand if you know it's going to work. Come on, you want to put a praise right there. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work. Hey, it's going to work. It's going to work. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. It's going to work on your behalf. Get up and try it again. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Good morning, St. Smyrna. I am blessed and thankful to have this opportunity to share with you, wherever you may be, a word from on high. To your pastor and my brother, the Reverend Tamarcus T. Cook, I thank God for the opportunity to once again stand behind this sacred desk to this music ministry that has gone before us and to all of us who are making this virtual worship possible. I thank God for your gift and for your time. My brothers and sisters, I would that you would follow me this morning to 1 Timothy chapter number six. And there I'll halt my homiletical high heels in verses 20 and 21. 1 Timothy chapter number 6, verses 20 through 21. And they read from the message translation on this wise. Oh, my dear Timothy, guard the treasure that you were given. Guard it with your life. Avoid the talk show religion and the practice confusion of the so-called experts. For people caught up in a lot of talk can miss the whole point of faith. And then Paul leaves us off with this. He says, overwhelming grace, may that keep you. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of God's word. And simply for the time that is ours to share together, I like to taxi down the theological highway towards truth and speak with us on this thought. Wise words of wisdom while you are on your way. Yes, wise words of wisdom while you are on your way. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to gather. We thank you, O oh God, for your word that has always been a lamp unto our feet and a light upon our path. So God, we come asking that you would speak so we would hear. You would move so that we might feel and that you would convict us so that we might go and do. In Jesus' name, we ask these things. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as a native of Atlanta, my daily commute in town from the suburbs pre-pandemic was 40 miles each way. And every time I was on the road, it was always accompanied by close contact with the congestion of Atlanta traffic. For it did not matter if it was 5.30 a.m. or 5.30 p.m., traffic just seemed to be a part of this unforgettable Atlanta landscape that required me to use my navigational devices in efforts to arrive at my appointed destination on time and in time. Beloved, I must admit to you that out of all of the navigational tools that are available, the one that I love the most is an app 
called Waze. For Waze, unlike Google Maps and MapQuest and Copilot and Kamut, not only helps me navigate, but I like Waze for two distinguishable and definitive reasons that put them ahead of the other applications. For one, it is a top-rated app that is specifically designed for traffic. And it is the only app whose performance and purposeful functionality is based on the experience of others that have traveled the same route that I'm traveling and they purposefully provide interactive insight onto what I can expect when it's my time to arrive. Oh yes, I like ways because before you see or I see with my own eyes what will be, Waze will send a push notification that allows me to hear in real time what I cannot see until a future time in efforts to offer suggestions on how I should govern my time right now. Won't you go ahead and send me likes if you know where I am going and meet me when I get there. For Waze tells me if there are objects in the road. Waze tells me when someone else's stall situation is stagnating my forward movement. I like Waze because I have a heavy foot and Waze tells me when it's time to slow down because police are located ahead and Waze tells me alternate routes that if I adhere to the way that I will arrive at my destination on time. But one of the things that I like that makes me ecstatic this Sunday morning about ways is that no matter how heavy the traffic, how long the delay, how difficult the route, how out of the way the alternative ways never tells me to stop. Uh, for as long as I'm willing to keep on going, ways will keep on directing. And with this accurate assertion, I've come by to tell you that I've already exited off this theological highway on through the anthropological expressway and made a right turn toward today's text. Uh, I don't know who you are or where you are or all that you've been experiencing, but I've come today with a word that reminds you if you keep on going there is a way that will keep on directing for we've gathered in this virtual communal space to perhaps garner the gusto in the middle of life's traffic jam just to refuel our energy to recalibrate our spirit to recharge our battery and to be reminded in a, this global pandemic that our current location is not our final destination and St. Smyrna you got to keep on going for we find ourselves, no matter where we're watching, in a peculiar place between current location and final destination amid chaos and uncertainty of a triple pandemic. Yes, we're in a viral pandemic, we're in a moral pandemic, and we're in an economic pandemic in which we are frustrated and cautious about our forward movement because we are stuck spiritually. We find ourselves stuck physically, can't go nowhere but outside your house, stuck mentally, emotionally, financially, and socially, and we are in a traffic jam. But here, amid the multiplicity of your situation, rippled with frustration and hesitation, I've come through with a sermonic illustration under the auspices of the Holy Ghost. Won't you holler back at me? And under the inspiration of some pastoral epistles, St. Smyrna, to tell you to keep on going. If you feel like going, won't you talk back to me? I feel like going. For the ancestors would have me conjure up the truth this morning that amid the contradictions of life, we ought to be reminded that trouble don't last always. And if trouble 
trouble does last. The hemorrhite stands in the gap to remind us in 2020 that God still specializes in things that seem impossible. And in God's own time, God can still do what no other power can do. And no matter how you've arrived in traffic or the amount of traffic you travail through, I've come with good news, not just from an electronic app, but from a handwritten epistle from the archives of antiquity that you can download divine wisdom from the hard drive of your heart, and it will help you to navigate this journey right now even though we cannot see down the road. Well, in our text today, lean in and come a little closer, St. Smyrna. It is undeniable that we find a way through some wise words of wisdom for the backdrop of these words whose authorship stylistically and doctrinally and historically mirror the footprints of Paul, yet it fails to give a precise footnote crediting him for his uh, as the unequivocal source. For the occasion of this epistle situates a handwritten letter because the teacher, the elder, the mentor, the father in the ministry has gone ahead of Timothy, the student, the church member, the lay leader, the mentee, the minister in training, and he leaves Timothy with instructions on how Timothy is to navigate his time. And just like in the text, I'm happy to report to you that just like right now in the text, there was traffic present too. At the time this text was written, there was a, a political traffic, political traffic where political leaders whose business acumen and ethics were non-existent. They lacked moral leadership and moral authority. They lacked integrity and downright stupidity that's dripped in white privilege that mandated the people during a plague and a pandemic not to wear a mask, even though experts definitively say that wearing a mask will limit the virus. Oh, I'm in the text. Not only is there a political text, but in our time in the text, there's religious traffic. Religious traffic of people teaching prosperity without the premise that the Bible says that the poor will be amongst you always and everything that you have, St. Smyrna, and everything that I have has been given to God on loan to us. For the time that we are here, oh, it's just political traffic. It's religious traffic in which there are religious leaders who are scamming people to believe that if you name it and claim it, then God will give it to you. And in this pandemic, if you've not learned anything else, I hope you've learned how to steal and open your Bible for yourself so that you can rightly divide what is true and what is not true and govern your yourselves accordingly. There's political traffic. Preach, A, I'm doing the best I can. There's religious traffic. And then there's spiritual traffic where people are trying uh, to forsake that which is right for that which will get them rich. There's still some people prioritizing conspicuous consumption over being content with what God has already given because I know I have a witness out there in virtual land that can testify with me what God has already given is already enough to supply my every need. So here we are. I invite you to come aboard this homiletical helicopter to peer down on the traffic jams of imposter syndrome of folks still trying to be like other people. Traffic jams of lazy work ethic that thinks ministry is more about giving and take, but more about taking than it is about giving, more about Facebook likes and Insta story shares and glow ups on social media that do not depict who you really are. The nights you've cried, the tears you you shed the friends that left the parties you've missed out on and the unanswered questions from God that sometimes feel like a scary nightmare 
rather than a sweet bedtime lullaby. Oh, but my brothers and sisters, in spite of this traffic, this pastoral epistle gives us some truth as we seek to keep on moving forward. There are three things that I'd like to lift for your learning, and then I'll bid you a good morning. For this letter in from Timothy says to us the first word of wisdom, y'all, in the middle of a global pandemic and in the middle of social, economic, political, emotional, and religious traffic that we've got to do is we've got to gauge what we consider to be gain. For in your study time this week, I'm pulling this from uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6 through 10. For Paul starts off telling Timothy to gauge what he considers to be gain. Paul says, if the sole aim for your ministry is money and riches and fame, then you will surely fail. And not only will you fail, you'll fall into temptation and harmful desires that will lead to your destruction. For he goes on to say that the love of money, of status, of fame will make your faith wither as you wander. And the guarantee of this type of life is not profit, but rather it is gain. Then he helps us by suggesting that there is great gain in godliness that is combined with contentment. For in this pandemic, I hope you've learned how to be content with what you already have. I hope that there's somebody out there that can say everything ain't all right, but everything ain't all wrong, and I'm learning how to be content. For the, the writer of the epistle says, someday, oh, I feel like preaching. The only blessed assurance we'll have is we'll have food and we'll have clothing. And in this fifth month of a shelter-in-place quarantine, the truth of the matter is that I know I'm not by myself. Uh, there are many of you out there that can testify with me that at one point or another in this pandemic, you've been content with the assurance that you have enough food to eat and you have clothes in your closet to wear. And it is enough to get you through. Uh, for Howard Thurman lifts up this charge to us, and he says, whatever may be the tensions and the stresses of the particular day, there is always lurking close at hand, and the trail of beauty of a forgotten joy or an unremembered peace. St. Smyrna, I pray that you've sat long enough to remember the forgotten joy of cooking your own food and eating at your own dinner table. I hope at one moment or another you've sat down to think about the unremembered peace of sitting on your front porch or your back patio and listening to the birds give their call to worship every morning. I hope that you have sat down long enough to remember the forgotten joy of picking up the telephone and calling a loved one. For you in this time, the word of wisdom is be content with what you have. And I've lived just a little while, and I've learned that sometimes in our quest to get we will lose. We'll lose our peace. We'll lose our sanity. We'll lose our health. We'll lose our family. And we'll lose our integrity. And I stand here as a preacher of the gospel to tell you that if you all of your getting, you don't get some understanding. And in all of your getting, you start losing peace and sanity and health and family that the price for fortune and fame, that's just too much of a cost for you to bear. Because of this truth, it's a good time for me to pull out the truth of this text to tell you you got to gauge what you consider to be gain. For what glitters might hijack your ethic, what blings might bind you to bad habits, what is popular might compromise your peace. You got to gain, St. Serna, what you consider, gauge what you consider to be gain. Are you learning? Are you growing? Are you listening? Are you purging? Or, or, or did you just come to come out of a pandemic to still be the same stagnant and the same old stale person who's trying to get shine without putting in the grind? For in all of our getting, get understanding. And the text says that we have not come this far 
for God to leave us right now, and we've got to gauge what we consider to be gain. Oh, I like that. But the second thing that this text teaches us is nestled between verses 11 through 19. And if I could just give you another G, Paul says not only must you gauge what you consider to be gain, but you got to garner the strength to have good faith. Oh, I like that this morning, my brothers and sisters. And I like the specificity of this pastoral pronouncement. For it is not okay in 2020 to just have good religion, Pastor. But I've stepped by on this journey to tell you, you got to have good faith. For this instruction of having good faith is a Christian ethics triple threat, triple threat that sits on the foundational framework that hoists as its base teleology. What is teleology? I'm glad you asked. It is a principle that asks you, what is your goal? And does your goal point to the good? And if your goal points to the good, is it good for the kingdom of God? Uh, I like this text about good faith because not only does it lift up teleology, but it lifts up the responsible ethic that asks you whatever you're seeking in this time, are you learning to learn to act according to what is a fitting response to what's going on around you? Uh, garner the strength for good faith. Good faith is teleological. It is a, a responsible ethic. And then I like it because this idea of a good faith is also rooted in the ethic of virtue. And virtue asks the question, does what you're getting and gauging and gaining, does it cause you to ask yourself, what are you becoming in the process? Uh, and I know these days get long and the fight gets exhausting, but I've stopped by to remind your church, uh, you got to keep on having good faith. Uh, what is good faith? I'm glad you asked. It's a faith that fights to be present and active no matter what happens. It's a faith that will be a witness to God's power that is at work in you and around you and in spite of you. What is good faith? It is a faith that speaks truth to power, a faith that condemns false teaching and fake prophets. It is a faith that yanks the chains and demands action of local, state, and federal government to take a look at the senseless killing of unarmed black and brown men and women. It is a faith that will demand justice for Breonna Taylor until it comes. What kind of faith is good faith? It is a faith that trusts Yahweh even when we can't trace, track, or time the sovereignty of God's punctuality. Anybody out there got good faith? It is a faith that says, if I must go, I'll go because I know I'm not going alone. Now, faith, it is a faith that will keep fighting until cricket places are made straight. It is a faith that does justice and loves mercy and walks humbly before God. It is a faith that does not give up in the time of trouble. But it is good faith is a faith that fights like hell to keep on pressing on. What is good faith? It is a faith that keeps talking justice until it's realized. Keep galvanizing and protesting and organizing until truth that is pressed to the earth shall again rise up. It is a faith that even in a pandemic, you will stand on what you know to be true and declare and decree over your house, over your life, over your finances, over your health, that you will live and see the salvation of the Lord in the land of the living. You have to have great faith, a faith that believes beyond all measure of doubt that God who has begun a good work in you whew, will see it through until the day of salvation. What is great faith? I hear Prathia Hall's voice, Reverend Prathia Hall, her voice is echoing through the winds of time to pick up 
where this epistle writer leaves off. And she wants to remind me, remind me and remind you that those of us that have a good faith and great faith must believe and fight for freedom and we must not rest until it comes. I'm on my way to third base and I'm turning into home. Wise words of wisdom while you're on your way. The first thing Paul teaches us is we got to gain what we consider <laughs> to be gained. The second thing that Paul teaches us is we've got to garner the strength to have great faith. But the last thing, St. Smyrna, that I stopped by here to encourage you with comes from the last two verses. And that simply wants me to remind you that you got to guard your God-given gift. Guard your God-given gift. Of Howard Thurman offers to us again this idea in which he says there is something in each and every one of you that must wait and listen for the sound of the genuine within yourself. For it is only the true God that each and every one of us will ever have. Talk Thurman. Thurman says if you cannot hear the genuine God within yourself, you will spend all of your life and exhaust all of your days uh, being pulled to and fro on the strings that somebody else pulls. Uh, and on this Sunday morning, I've come today to tell you, these words of wisdom are not just for Timothy, but I like to take the liberty wherever you are and whoever you are to insert your name in the A clause of the verse so that it might awaken you in a way that reminds you that God's words are not just meant to be reflective. But I stopped by here this morning to tell you God's word is meant to be responsive. Guard the deposit that God has given you. For the almighty creator knew what he was doing when he formed you in your mother's womb. Guard the deposit that God gave for each of you. And just like me, we are uniquely gifted, but yet gifted by God nonetheless. And you got to guard the deposit that God has placed in your care. If you used to singing, just because you ain't singing on Sunday morning, you ought to tune up in your shower. That's how you guard the deposit that God has for you. Preachers, just because you're not preaching to an audience on Sunday morning, get in your shower, go in your yard, pull out your Bible, and preach anyhow. Whatever the gift that God has placed in you, now is not the time to be stagnant. Now is not the time to be lazy. Now is not the time to be lax. Now is the time for you to water, for you to learn, for you to grow, for you to sharpen, and for you to hone. The Bible says, guard the deposit that God has deposited in you. Why do I have to guard the deposit? I'm glad you ask. For nobody in their right mind makes a deposit and does not come back to withdraw it. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to somebody to remind you that in God's own time, when the pandemic is over, when bodies are healed, when outdoors gets opened, when life goes back to what we once knew it to be, God is going to come back to withdraw the deposit he has put in you. And your charge is to be ready to yield to the withdrawal. Oh, yes. And I know tonight, I know this morning, I know this time is not easy. But one of the beautiful things about the withdrawal is that the withdrawal ain't just for the good of you. Whew. It's not good, they're not just good for your elevation and your celebration, but it's good so that God would get the glory out of you. 
I know this road has been weary. I know this night has been long. I know the questions have been numerous. I know the death has been difficult. And I know that the wrestling seems to be everlasting. For some of you, it may seem uh, that the haters are still ever present. Uh, and the grapple seems to be unending. Uh, the study is still tedious. Uh, the work is overwhelming. Uh, but despite all of it, God is still able. Uh, and if you know like I know, uh, we may not be able to gather in the sanctuary until 2021. Uh, but God is still moving. God is still blessing. God is still protecting. God is still providing. And God is still worthy. Ooh, I wish I had some help in here. God is still worthy of all of our praise. There's still growth in the middle of this grief. God is still providing comfort in the middle of COVID-19. God is still opening closed doors. God is still separating the chaff from the wheat. God is still making ways in the wilderness. And through all of this traffic, God is still calling and requiring us to keep the faith. And as I go to my seat, there's one more thing I came to tell you. And St. Smyrna, after you have gauged what you have considered to be gain, after you have garnered the strength to have great faith, and after you have guarded the deposit that God has for you, I'm so excited to report to you that there is another G in the text that give you affirmation and accompaniment along the way. What is the last G? I'm glad you've asked. Grace. For the text says overwhelming grace will keep you. I wouldn't be any type of preacher if I didn't interrogate the text. What kind of grace? I'm glad you ask. For the Bible says it's sufficient grace. The hymn poet says it's amazing grace. And the epistle writer says it's overwhelming grace. Grace that covers. Grace that keeps. Grace that guides. Grace that buys liberty. Grace that looks beyond your faults and sees your knees. And on this Sunday morning is is there anybody who's excited that you know you got grace? God's amazing grace. Uh, for there is no secret uh, what God's grace can do. Uh, what his grace has done for others, it can do the same thing for you. Uh, so buckle your seatbelts. Uh, go on, put your makeup on. Uh, get your rest and look around where you are. Uh, and know that if you're still here, uh, it's because of God's grace. Uh, if you're listening to me and you're looking at me, that's just an indication of God's grace. Uh, if you're in the hospital, but you can still hear, uh, that's God's grace. Uh, if you have food in your refrigerator, if you got enough money to pay your bills, that's just God's grace. Everything ain't all right and everything ain't all wrong. High five your person sitting on the couch with you and say that's just God's grace. I'm so glad that when I do my part, God does God's part and leaves us with the assurance and an affirmation that grace will keep on keeping us. And that's my prayer for you today. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, may the grace of God and the sweet communion of God's Holy Spirit, may it rest, may it rule, and may it with you forever, forever, and ever. Amen. Wise words of wisdom while you are on your way. God bless you and God keep you, St. Smyrna. Go. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know how difficult it is for you right now in this season. But I do know a man. I know a man who can change anything. 
no man who can change anybody. Don't put your faith, don't put your confidence, don't put your trust in the government. Don't put your trust, don't put your faith, don't put your hope in a check. Don't put your faith, don't put your trust, don't put your confidence in this season of corona to be over. But no matter what, your hope, your faith, your trust, it should be rooted in the Lord. Come see a man. Listen, I know society's trying to tell you to do everything. Trying to tell you to, to consider all manner of possibilities. But you can do nothing without God. My brother, my sister, right where you are. You don't have to wait until St. Smyrna's doors are open. But right now, you can come see this man named Jesus. The invitation is extended to you right now. The door of God's house is open right there in the confinements of your home. The door of the church is open. Will you come this morning? Preacher, what do you mean will I come? I'm sitting home. You're there. What do you mean will I come? Will you come to Christ this morning? If you're a sinner and you need to know the Lord as your Savior, if you'll pray this prayer with me, I believe and you should believe that you will be saved. Will you pray this prayer with me? Lord, I am a sinner. I've made mistakes. I've messed up. But Lord, now I want to do better. I want you, Jesus, to come into my heart. I want to make you the head of my life. My brother, my sister, if you prayed that simple prayer with me right now, the angels are rejoicing right where you are. In heaven, the angels are rejoicing because you, my brother, you, my sister, are saved. Oh, can you give God praise right there in the confinements of your home? Just thank God for salvation. I'd like to hear from you. Will you write me? Will you let me know that you've made this decision? If you just send an email to us, messages right there on Facebook, messages right there on YouTube. I'll send an email to info at stsmyrnabc.org. Listen, if you want me to directly hear from you, send me an email directly to Marcus at stsmyrnabc.org. Right there on your screen, we want to hear from you this morning. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. Good morning, St. Smyrna family and guests. Thank you again for tuning in with us this morning. I hope you enjoyed it and it blessed you. Um, I know this time of year we would normally be celebrating family and friends, um, and I know we're not really seeing much of either one of those groups of people right now. But I want you to stay encouraged, find comfort in knowing that God is still in control in the midst of all of this. Um, we are praying for you. We miss you very much. Love you. Take care. <laughs>